Hi, I welcome you all to the session where we are going to study about a method for the determination of thermal conductivity of a bad conductor of heat. The method we are about to see is the least disc method. And taking you along on this journey is Dr. Yunus Jerusha, an assistant professor of physics. Today we are going to see about a method for the determination of thermal conductivity of a poor conductor of heat using the least disc method. The apparatus which are required are as follows. There is a steam boiler which is filled three fourth with water and whose steam can escape through the outlet present. Rubber tubing is necessary for the flow of steam from the steam boiler to the steam chamber. There are a couple of thermometers which are required to measure the steady state temperatures and we have insulators in the form of discs such as cardboard, glass and also gypsum. This is the least disc apparatus which consists of a steam chamber below which we have the least disc or the metal disc. There are provisions in the steam chamber for the steam to come in as well as go out. The entire least disc apparatus is hung on a retort stand by means of twine. The basic components in a least disc apparatus are is first of all the metal disc having a thickness H and a radius R. There is a provision in the metal disc or the least disc where we insert a thermometer named as T2. This thermometer is used to measure the steady state temperature of the metal disc and is also used to measure the various temperatures during the measurement for the rate of cooling. Secondly, we have a cardboard. The thickness of the cardboard is small d and it has the radius r same as that of the metal disc. This is next followed by a steam chamber where we have a provision for steam to escape and also a provision for steam to be sent in. The steam chamber is also provided with an opening for the thermometer T1 and the T1 thermometer is used to measure the steady state temperature of the steam chamber. All these components are now put in a perfect order in order to perform the experiment. The metal disc D or the least disc is the one which is strung by means of twine using a stand. On top of this we place the poor conductor P which is the same radius as the disc. And above that the steam chamber C is placed and finally we insert the thermometers T1 and T2 into the steam chamber as well as into the metal disc in order to measure the steady state temperatures theta1 and theta2 of the steam chamber and metal disc respectively. The experiment is performed by allowing steam to pass from the steam boiler to the steam chamber C. This steam is allowed to flow through till the thermometers T1 and T2 show the steady state temperatures theta1 and theta2 respectively. After the measurement of these two temperatures the radius R of the disc D, the thickness of the cardboard small d, the thickness of the metal disc small h are measured. Later, the mass M of the disc is also measured.
order to measure the rate of cooling, a certain procedure is followed. As the first step, we have the metal disc into which we have the thermometer T2 placed on top of which we have the cardboard and above that we have the steam chamber in which we have the thermometer T1 to be inserted. We allow heating to continue till the steady state temperatures theta1 and theta2 are measured. Once theta1 and theta2 are measured, we proceed to the next step where we remove the cardboard and the steam chamber now is placed directly on the metal disc. Due to metal-metal contact, the temperature of the metal disc now increases at a very high rate and the temperature increases to let us say theta 2 plus 10 degrees Celsius. Following this and after allowing the temperature of the metal disc to increase to theta 2 plus 10 degrees Celsius, the steam chamber is removed. Due to a lack of the heat source, the temperature of the metal disc now starts to decrease from theta 2 plus 10 degrees Celsius. As it starts to decrease, we allow the temperature to come down to theta 2 plus 5 degrees Celsius and we start the stop clock and measure the various time readings for every 1 degree drop in the temperature of the metal disc. These readings are noted as the stop clock keeps going continuously without a break and are noted down in a tabular column as follows. We keep noting down these readings till the temperature of the metal disc reaches theta 2 minus 5 degrees Celsius. Some of the various observations and terms which are needed to be known in order to proceed with the calculations for this experiment are the thickness of the poor conductor denoted by small d, the radius of the disc denoted by small r, mass of the disc represented by capital M, thickness of the metal disc denoted by h, steady state temperature of the steam chamber which is theta 1, steady state temperature of the metal disc represented by theta 2, the thermal conductivity of the given poor conductor capital K, the rate of cooling at theta 2 given by capital R and the specific heat capacity of the material of the metal disc denoted by S. Proceed on to derive the thermal conductivity of the bad conductor. To find that, we need to know the amount of heat which is conducted per second through the poor conductor which is given by Ka theta 1 minus theta 2 by D. On substitution of the area of cross section A with pi r square, we have Q the amount of heat which is conducted per second through the poor conductor to be K pi r square theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by D which we call as equation 1 and this heat which is conducted through the poor conductor reaches the metal disc and we have radiation coming out of the metal disc from the exposed area of the disc and this heat energy is given by Q is equal to MSR where M stands for the mass of the disc Yes, the specific heat capacity of the material of the disc and R is the rate of cooling of the disc. This we call as equation 2. Under steady state conditions, we need to equate the amount of heat which is conducted to the amount of heat which is lost due to radiation to the surroundings. Therefore, we now have this expression on equating 1 and 2 and from this expression, on cross multiplication, we find out the thermal conductivity K to be MSRD divided by pi r square theta 1 minus theta 2. In this expression 3, R 
the rate of cooling is unknown and we have to perform the experiment from which we obtain R. Find the rate of cooling, we measure the area of the disk which is exposed to the surrounding at different instances during the experiment. For the first, we find the area of the disk which is exposed to the surrounding during the first part of the experiment when we have the steam chamber, cardboard and metal disk placed one on top of the other. So during this part, the surface area of the metal disk which is exposed is the bottom circular area and the cylindrical surface area alone. Therefore, the area corresponding to this is pi r square plus 2 pi r h and taking the common term pi r outside, we have pi r into r plus 2 h. Next, we find the area of the disk which is exposed to the surrounding during the last part of the experiment when we have only the metal disk to be present. Therefore, the surface areas which are exposed to the surrounding are the upper circular surface area, the lower circular surface area and the cylindrical surface area. Therefore, we now have the total area to be given by 2 pi r square for the circular surface areas and 2 pi r h for the cylindrical surface area. 2 pi r being common, it is taken out and we have 2 pi r into r plus h. The rate of cooling is directly proportional to the area of the surface which is exposed and thereby we have r the rate of cooling to be proportional to pi r into r plus 2 h which we denote as equation 4 and d theta by dt at theta 2 is another rate of cooling during the last part which is proportional to 2 pi r into r plus h. This we denote as equation 5. Write equation 4 by equation 5 and we have r by d theta by dt at theta 2 to be equal to pi r into r plus 2 h divided by 2 pi r into r plus h. Pi r gets cancelled out. We have r plus 2 h divided by 2 into r plus h which on expansion in the denominator we have 2r plus 2h. We now find r which is supposed to be substituted. So on cross multiplication we have this equation 6 to be obtained. Equation 6 is now substituted in equation 3 which is the expression for the thermal conductivity of the bad conductor and we have k the thermal conductivity of the bad conductor to be equal to msd into d theta by dt at theta 2 divided by pi r square into theta 1 minus theta 2 into r plus 2h divided by 2r plus 2h with the units for thermal conductivity to be watt per meter per kelvin. From this expression we can obtain the numerical value of the coefficient of thermal conductivity of the given poor conductor of heat or the given thermal insulator to be found out. d theta by dt at theta 2 is unknown in expression 7. Therefore, in order to find it, we proceed with drawing the time temperature graph. Using this graph, we obtain a cooling curve as is shown in the diagram and we obtain d theta by dt at theta 2. This value of d theta by dt at theta 2 is now substituted in equation 7 and we obtain the final value of the thermal conductivity of the bad conductor or poor conductor of heat. Thank you for your patient listening. Hope you understood this topic.